good morning. Uh, my name's Roger Lewis, and I write the uh, Grub Street, or well, not the Grub Street, but journal blog, um, and have put together a suite of uh, internet uh, tools, ideas, um, called Wikiballot. Um, most of the work on Wikiballot was actually done back in um, March and April and May of 2019. Um, John Ward, who writes uh, the Slog blog, um, felt that some sort of uh, grassroots communication network um, action group um, would be appropriate at that time. Um, if you recall at that time there were the various votes in Parliament about the different versions of Theresa May's Brexit uh, withdrawal agreement. So uh, the slog is an apolitical, uh, satirical blog, um, magazine type blog uh, that looks at various issues um, in a non-ideological um, standpoint and John Ward who writes that blog has a background in um, the communications business and the advertising business. My own background is actually in real estate. Uh, I was a successful London Docklands uh, property developer and property consultant uh, in the uh, 1990s um, and uh, I trained in the early 1980s. Um, with large organisations like uh, Shell UK and the Prudential Insurance Society, uh, London Shop PLC. Uh, then I worked for a very posh firm called Hillier Parker May and Rowden and I qualified as a chartered surveyor um, and I got a degree in something called Urban Estate Management. Um, at Cambridge they call that land economy. Um, so that's John's background and my background, both of which are business backgrounds. Gollum X One Fee blog, David Malone, um, is a David is a filmmaker, a documentary filmmaker, um, who was a producer on the BBC Horizon program and who made quite a lot of groundbreaking documentaries um, through the 1990s. In 1995, for instance, he made the documentary Icon Earth. Um, since then, he's been an independent producer and produced uh, films about mathematics, such as uh, Dangerous Knowledge. Um, and uh, his most recent documentary is um, called Why Are We Here? and that's available on Curiosity Stream. Um, and David and I are friends and um, we, we cemented our friendship on the internet where we met when I started commenting on the Gollum blog back in 2011. Um, and I uh, assisted with David's campaign for leadership of the UK Green Party in the 2016 leadership election. Um, and then the fourth pamphleteer, I call us the three pamphleteers uh, because of course famously there are four musketeers, and the fourth musketeer is Ranjan Balakumaran and Ranjan um, is a financial uh, journalist um, who has a background in banking um, and also in teaching English as a foreign language. Um, and Ranjan is a bibliophile, um, he collects and reads a tremendous amount of, 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 of literature um, and he publishes a blog called The London Conversation um, and his handle on Twitter is Financial Eyes. So, the four of us um, met really through David Malone and, and the Gollum blog because cross postings from Gollum to the slog 
uh, and also Ranjam worked for a internet media company called Real Media and he interviewed David Malone um, for Real Media and through that uh, he and I got in touch um, because I was a great admirer of uh, Ranjan's work. There's a series on Real Media which started a couple of years back called Join the Dots which is a, a wonderful look at, at the news uh, from a critical outside of the mainstream narratives and political party sort of uh, perspective. It's fair to say that Real Media has a left-wing uh, perspective and did then and, and does now, although now it's more or less the media arm of Extinction Rebellion. Um, so that's that's where we're coming from, a group of, of writers. I've been blogging since um, back in 2011 um, and when I, I live in Sweden, I moved to Sweden in 2010, um, things got very sketchy uh, business-wise after the financial crisis and the bank sold my, uh, my estate just outside Bristol um, and uh, I moved my family to Sweden so that we could, um, so, so that they wouldn't have to uh, go through the various stages of uh, banks repossessing landed property and so forth um, and uh, I then spent time trying to figure out well hold on a second what what's happening here how, how is this possible um, and that led me into um, uh, monetary reform and looking at uh, monetary theory etc and on, on the Grub Street, or well, not the Grub Street Journal blog, you'll find a lot about, um, about money, what it is, about political economy, etc. Um, I'm, I'm a poet and a philosopher and um, also a guitar player. And um, I took the opportunity when I moved to Sweden to sort of study guitar more seriously. I'm married to a classical musician, a classical clarinet player and composer. Um, so, Wiki Ballot, let me just, just talk a little bit about Wiki Ballot and what it's set up to provoke. Above all, it's set up to provoke critical thinking. It's not to um, promote the political uh, objectives of any particular party or group. Um, for my own part, I'm actually a philosophical anarchist um, and my own uh, views, I guess, would be described as left libertarian if they had to be categorised. Um, but actually, I consider myself to be part of the establishment, part of the British and part of the European establishment. Um, and... Uh, it's my own belief that uh, more libertarian, free-thinking um, individuals uh, have been either excluded by their own choices or actually actively excluded from the discourse by the present faction of the establishment who I believe are a minority that are trying to force through their own a particular view of one human nature um, and two about uh, what is the best form of government and the best form of government for this faction is not democracy uh, I am a Democrat I I've studied British and European history and world history and um, Democracy, which can mean many different things to many different people, but it's examining those ideas which um, Wiki Ballot will point some signposts at in the direction of critical um, study and uh, journalism on those questions. So, um, critical thinking is the thing. Um, so, 
The first thing that was set up for Wikiballot was actually a wiki. Um, most people have heard of Wikipedia and there are various views on it and editing it. Uh, but the platform of a wiki is um, through a organization called Wikimedia is available for anyone to set up their own wiki and so we did that actually on a platform called Mihari's uh, which is an outfit set up by a guy called John Lewis, no relation um, and the wiki is there uh, and I've spent the last week trying to make it a little more user friendly um, an endeavour in which I have to report sadly I think I've been rather unsuccessful at um, so my thoughts are turning to actually um, making a, a, a more user-friendly website and trying to automate some of the pages for claiming constituencies. So that's wiki, the, the wiki ballot tactical voting wiki. I've set up a Reverb Nation page which is kind of the arts and ideas wing uh, and there are various videos etc on there, a couple of poems um, and uh, uh, Reverb Nation have a number of widgets which they, they're called fan collectors um, and those widgets are actually very good for uh, people to say if you're a band in a local area you set up a page and, and uh, you then promote the band so effectively um, the idea is that wiki ballot groupings however they choose to form themselves can use the wiki as a uh, source of inspiration and a point of contact into whatever they want to do locally um, i don't care if the local organization is a remain organization or a leave organization if um, as a community people get together and feel that their best interests are served by either of those options or none of those options um, it's best for people to get together and consider that uh, and also to talk to the other groups that perhaps have a different set of objectives um, and to figure out then how uh, shared objectives whether in or out can actually be achieved um, and so the arts and ideas section um, anyone can set up a reverb nation page for free and i'd encourage people locally to adopt a constituency and, and, and to do that. Um, I set up a T-Mills thing just as a, uh, a pointer really to how one can you know, raise some walking around money. Um, T-Mills is a organic cotton uh, thing, it's based on the Isle of Wight I believe. Um, I think it's owned by a company called uh, Muharani or something. Uh, um, but uh, I've done some t-shirt designs and put them up there. I, I do have a channel called Felicit Philosities on there where there are some philosophy, uh, philosophy t-shirts. And I set up a blog and I set up the blog for Wikiballa on the Vivaldi web browser. Now, if you use Google and Google Chrome, um, effectively you are agreeing to be the product um, and uh, generally speaking where something is offered free um, and you're using it it's not free your data is used for advertising purposes and and you become the product now you know whether people are happy with that or not if they're aware of it then you know that's fine I'm not making any judgment on that um, the Google suite of applications though are not designed to foster critical thinking um, which, which I do object to uh, and social media in my opinion is designed to uh, polarise people to set them in a pose, to divide and rule basically and to think narrowly towards a guided goal. It uses the suggestibility that is in all of us to try and direct us in a particular direction towards a particular conclusion um, whether that's to buy a particular product or whether that is to accept a particular um, state narrative um, 
it really amounts to it amounts to the same thing. If you're if you're selling someone the idea, oh, the government is great in doing a good job, or if you're selling someone the idea that uh, Coca Cola is better than Pepsi Cola, or McDonald's is better than Burger King, um, there's very little difference in mass communication and media between those concepts. And so the Vivaldi browser is a more private browser. I set up on Startpage, which is a private browser coming out of Holland uh, or the Netherlands. Um, and on that, I've uh, customized something which I've called Hypatia's Eye Browser. Uh, and that has links to various non-mainstream media sources, some of the left, some of the right, um, and also the, some of the mainstream ones. Um, and uh, that can be loaded into your own browser. You can do Start Page or any of the others. There's things like Dissenter, which is considered to be a horrible alt-right type thing, but Dissenter, Gab, um, alternatives to uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Amazon, and uh, Google. Uh, effectively. There are alternatives out there that they all work perfectly well um, and uh, I'm very interested in the internet. One of the things I got into developing in the 1990s was actually data centers um, and I've been very interested in the distributed network computing which replaces the data, data center and cloud model with a distributed network of uh, computers, which is a, um, which is, which is a cloud instantiation, but uh, that's another story. And 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 if you look up Grub Street Journal, on the uh, not the Grub Street Journal blog, you'll find lots about Wikiballa, Open Index Protocol, the Flow cryptocurrency, Ethereum, Bitcoin, um, but also. Uh, distributed voting systems. I put up a poll the other day on something called Polis, which is a distributed voting system. Um, and uh, uh, that is actually on the app which I made for Wikiballot. And the app is called, strangely enough, Wikiballot, uh, but it's on a platform called Beza. Um, and Beza, some of you may know from the Dragon's Den television program where uh, it was actually one of the successful things that received investment for for that and so that means that all of these things I'm talking about um, are under the wiki ballot umbrella if you like and it is an umbrella if you look at the logo it, it, it shows a series of umbrellas and a, and a big tent um, and uh, under that umbrella the wiki ballot um, suite of applications and sites and what have you uh, are all browsable through a palm held device smartphone uh, call it what you will so twitter for the general election 2019 have banned political ads you may know that uh, facebook on the other hand haven't and facebook of course have got nick clegg working for them in a very important, highly paid role uh, to do with tackling fake news. Um, and interestingly, the BBC um, technology editor, Rory Kellen-Jones, and the political uh, editor, Faisal Islam, um, are asking people to take screenshots of um, political ads that appear in their Facebook and also to... Uh, click on why am I seeing this and send that information to the BBC and it'll be interesting to see uh, what they do with that data. There's an interesting Twitter thread which you'll find um, in, in, in recent posts on the Wikiballot blog. Um, so I've explained uh, the four pamphleteers, that's uh, Slog John Ward, uh, Gollum David Malone, London Conversation, Financial Eyes, Ranjan Balakumaran and uh, not the Grub Street Journal, and that's uh, Roger Lewis, yours truly. 
So let's move on to general election 2019. Um, it's an important general election. Um, 2015 was important, 2017 was important, but 2019 is very important. 2010 I see as a watershed election, uh, where of course that's where the Lib Dems got into bed with the Conservatives and rammed through a very damaging austerity budget. Um, and now we've got Joe Swinson basically wants everyone to forget about all of that um, and be led back into the EU fold uh, where everything will be lovely and rosy. Um, well, uh, uh, needless to say, I don't subscribe to that view. Um, you may, and, 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 and I gladly discuss with anyone uh, and uh, modify any, any aspects of it which, which I haven't thought about, haven't thought about with all of the facts because um, it's an emergent process um, that, that there isn't one UK state or one UK political settlement in the same way there isn't one um, United States of America one or one European Union one. Um, it's uh, one size fits all um, is a bad idea um, in my opinion and the current idea of the faction in control um, and trying to ram through uh, one version of governance um, is not uh, it is not a democratic way of doing things in my opinion so brexit um, let's look at three headings for brexit democracy economy and fairness okay and then let's consider three different uh, systems the eu system the uk system and the united states system the EU system is a centrally controlled technocratic system um, which is uh, run by a technocratic bureaucracy uh, which in turn is run uh, on, on a corporate basis um, where the head of the commission, currently Jean-Claude Juncker and um, uh, listed to be uh, the ex-German defence minister, uh, Ursula von Leyen. Right, so that's the EU system, okay, uh, which is a technocratic, um, federated system, uh, which has member states, um, which in turn are seen as being subsidiaries of a corporate overall um, head office, as it were. And then that's further broken down into divisions and they're going for a sort of an overarching kind of United Nations idea of, uh, uh, well, city-states really. Um, and it's a system which doesn't get much scrutiny and hasn't had much scrutiny and wiki ballot encourages people to think critically about what it is that it's proposing now the uk system is a parliamentary democracy and we've seen a lot of uh, uh, discussion about what that means in the recent um, supreme court case and the uk system is a common law system of um, of government a parliamentary uh, democracy where our head of state is actually the monarch, uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Um, and the way that that works and, and how that evolved um, is actually quite really well set out in a blog that John Ward did the other day, which tracks um, political development in the UK from 1215 in, in quite a humorous way. So if you're new to the subject, it's worth reading that. Um, and 
Um, there are, or there is, uh, on the wiki ballot blog, a section about the English Democrats case, um, and uh, a very good interview on the uh, Chaffers and Bray channel uh, with Robin Tilbrook, who is the uh, uh, leader of the English Democrat Party, who, who happens to be a solicitor. And he makes the point about the difference between English common law and um, the European system, which is based more on Roman law. And the, the systems uh, could broadly be described as inquisitorial, as per pro the EU system, and adversarial with respect to the UK system. Uh, which leads to a whole set of different um, ideas about being tried by one peer, one's peers, um, about um, equality under the law, and so forth. Um, and that, that's a very, very important point. And then you have the US, US system, which is a, Republica, a, republic, um, a Republican system. And the US Republic is not a democracy in the same sense that the UK system or a technocracy in the same sense as the EU system. Um, and the US system, in my opinion, most closely uh, resembles a, a, an oligarchy. Um, it's a, an oligarchical republic um, and uh, it has a written constitution um, and uh, to understand the US Constitution, one needs to read something called the Federalist Papers, and, and you have to look at the difference between the Hamiltonian view and the Jeffersonian view of uh, what the US Constitution actually was, and then, of course, it's evolved from there. Um, and uh, a very important part of that evolution is something called Citizens United, which has admitted very large money into US politics, I did a blog the other day uh, quoting John Dewey who said that um, as long as the uh, uh, politics is the shadow cast by big, um, big business there will be no uh, attenuation of the, um, uh, of the object as it were. Um, so those are those systems. Now within those systems um, I would I would propose uh, two axioms, okay? The first axiom is the axiom of money and debt, and the second axiom is the axiom of rich and poor. And how we understand money, and how we understand debt, and how we understand what it is to be rich, and how we understand what it is to be poor um, will inform then growing out of those two axioms um, the basis in which the options of running a society whether it's a country a federation a one world government or whatever um, money and debt and rich and poor and how you organize those broad groups. Um, now the advertisers break us down into uh, A, 1, 2, 3, B, C's, D's and so forth. Um, the poor at the moment um, are lumped into something called the precariat which was discussed at the Builder Group, um, Bilderberg Group at the Dresden meeting which I believe was in 2015. Um, the rich, you want to know about what the rich think, then you go to Davos um, and, 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 and just, you know, search Davos and put any policy thing in and you'll get some rich person or politician representing rich people telling you exactly how you should live your life. Um, money, money, banking, central banks, the treasury, the tax man, all of these different things, how do they work? Um, and thinking about that is, is, is quite important. Um, for instance, to the EU system, how important is the £39 million, pounds, uh, a billion pound divorce payment to the EU system? Um, and the, 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 the EU system comes under th something called the European Central Bank. And the constitution of the EU is very clear 
that individual states that have the euro as their currency uh, must borrow money if they wish to spend it and are not able to create it. And the ECB, which is largely controlled by the German Bundesbank, which is the German Central Bank, um, enforce a very, very narrow view as to um, who gets to create money and the terms under which money might be borrowed. Um, and to study that in depth, there's a wonderful report which was called um, uh, by, by Corporate Watch um, about the Greek crisis and the global financial crisis. And, and, and it goes into these money questions um, and elsewhere on, on the um, Grub Street Journal blog, you'll find those too. The UK system is one of the oldest banking systems. Um, the Bank of England is, uh, is owned by uh, British society, by the, by, by the government as well, but it, it's independent of the Treasury. Uh, that's the first thing Gordon Brown did when he got uh, when the Labour government came in in 1997. Uh, but most of the money that's created in the EU system and in the uh, UK system and the US system is created by the private banks actually making loans. Um, and uh, the proof of that, there's a guy called Professor Richard Werner um, who... Uh, published a paper showing how when a bank lends money in the EU, um, it doesn't use deposits or anything like that. It makes the loan, i.e. creating the money, and then uh, they do the paperwork afterwards to satisfy the regulations, which are quite fluid. Um, and uh, uh, they apply very strictly if you're poor, and they don't apply so much if you're a large, rich corporation. Um, and uh, there's an old uh, aphorism, uh, government of the people, for the people, and by the people. And what we actually have is government of, of the, the people by the large corporations for the rich. Um, and uh, the rich are set up as some chosen elite and the idea of elites is something that has really been pushed very, very hard in the narratives of what I call neoliberalism, uh, which is a political philosophy, um, almost, well, a belief system, it's, it's pretty much a religion, um, with you know markets are worshipped corporations billionaires the chosen chosenness um, and chosenness is something that you find very much in a religion called calvinism uh, most people think oh no that's jewish he's never going to say something anti-semitic um, i'm not anti-semitic i'm um, an or a very orthodox christian which makes me a jew uh, i'm a jew for jesus um, and Muhammad and I see uh, Moses, uh, Jesus and Muhammad uh, all as uh, getting back to the Abrahamic law, um, which I don't interpret in uh, terms of you know, ancient Moors and so forth. Um, mine is a very naturalistic faith. Um, and uh, I understand religion really through the lenses of Maimonides, who was a Jewish philosopher, um, and a uh, Irish monk called Pelagius. Um, and uh, so, by being a follower of Pelagius, I'm considered to be a heretic. Um, also, as a follower of Spinoza, who's a another famous Jewish philosopher who was actually expelled from the Jewish faith uh, by the Jewish elders in Amsterdam where he was living, he was born in Portugal. Um, and uh, so my perspective on political economy comes from Jesus' teachings in the Gospels brought up to date. Um, 
so and by such uh, theologians as uh, Matthew Cox um, uh, David Annette um, I mean there are others um, so that then comes to fairness um, I recommend a very funny video called Supply Side Jesus. Jesus, both a series of uh, a mini TV series, a series made of that name, uh, but a comedy thing from, I think it was back in the 1990s, um, called Supply Side Jesus, and it really is very, very funny. Uh, Al Franken, who's a United States Senator, used to be on Saturday Night Live. He's a funny guy, and that's a very funny look at uh, the um, abandonment, really, of the Gospels of Jesus um, to the ends of um, a view of human nature and political economy uh, that is pre preached still today. Um, you know, uh, Hayek, Friedman, etc. Um, and then the daddy of public choice theory, uh, Buchanan. Um, so uh, on that, um, there's a great uh, Adam Curtis film called Fuck You Buddy. Um, he's made a number of really good uh, documentaries, um, things like, uh, oh, well, th there are lots of them. Um, Hyper Normalization was, was the most recent one that was on the BBC iPlayer. There's another one called Bitter Lake. Um, but understanding globalism and global world government with a United Nations agenda and understanding internationalism, which is a cooperation between nations where nations do exist, as opposed to an EU uh, globalist agenda, which comes under a UN one world government type umbrella. Um, studying factions in the oligarchy is very much like from kids of the cold, of the cold war like me um, kremlin watching used to be a sport um, and uh, uh, of course uh, eu parliament watching or commission watching is is just like kremlin watching used to be and, and uh, a number of um, uh, european countries that have come from what was uh, the former soviet union um, you know, have commented, you know, why is the EU trying to turn itself into a sort of a Soviet um, innovation on, on, on what they were doing there? Uh, it's, it's an interesting point and, and bears, bears some examination. Um, so, the general election 2019, let's just have a little think about that just to wrap up here. Um, there's no one party uh, that represents a kind of um, solution to the problems in political economy in the United Kingdom, in Europe, in the world. Uh, that just isn't um, what this is about. And whatever happens, uh, For people to take back control of their own, what John Ward calls personal destiny control, um, it's a question of getting involved and discussing things with each other and learning from each other um, in reading groups, discussing this now and again down the pub. It, um, in the same joshy way as perhaps sometimes we discuss cricket or rugby or football, hockey, lacrosse, you know, whatever it is. Um, and um, the, the three main he headings um, with regard to Brexit in the UK are leave, remain and reform, or remain with business as usual, get back to, um, you know, uh, and accept the, the, the direction of the EU, which has accelerated in the direction of federal, federalism 
and very much top-down authoritarianism. Um, now, so, if the UK leaves the EU with a, a so-called hard Brexit, W2A, 2 Brexit, the EU still exists within a framework of world political economy. That doesn't change. And this is a point which is made in the book Flexit uh, by uh, Dr Richard North, who wrote a lot of stuff with the late Christopher Booker of the Daily Telegraph. And um, what Dr North makes absolutely clear is that, of course, the institutional framework for international trade, cooperation, laws, etc., exists whether it's a hard, any, you know, if Britain isn't in the EU, it still has to deal with all those people, including the EU. And there are institutions that exist for that and have existed. Um, and Dr. North analyzes the degree of influence that the uh, United Kingdom still has within those organizations when still in the EU um, and uh, what, uh, what, to what extent repatriating some of the delegated voting power to the EU, you know, where will, the, where, where will Britain stand um, as an independent nation again, an independent union? It's a, it's a very important point, a very interesting point, and then that gets into all the different types of, <coughs> well, if, if Britain leaves, what will be the um, relationship with the EU going forward, which is the much vaunted, you know, the trade deal. Um, and that bears examination, and it doesn't get the sort of examination that it requires in the British mainstream media. It just doesn't. Remain and reform. Now, I saw a very interesting uh, interview by a guy called Mehdi Hassan, who is now with Al Jazeera. He's a brilliant guy. Um, I disagree with a lot of what he says, but he was in interviewing Richard Price at the Oxford Union and um, with a panel of three people asking questions. One, a Cambridge economist, one, um, some sort of political activist guy, and, and the other, the lovely um, Ash Sarkar of Navarra Media. Now, I have a lot of time for Ash, um, and uh, she, she, she made one thing, she said one thing to Richard Tice, I campaign to remain in the EU, but to reform the EU. Remain and reform. So what does that mean, and how reformable is the EU? Um, you could ask the Greeks or the Cypriots about that. You could ask the Irish about that. Um, It's a very hard concept to believe in. There's an organisation called DM25, um, which does believe that that's possible. Uh, Yanis Varoufakis is uh, the person that, that kind of got behind that, but there are other people. Caroline Lucas of the, of, of, of the Green Party was involved at the launch, and I'm, it, it doesn't seem that much of their excellent work, their manifesto is well worth reading, the website is still up. Um, Varoufakis's book, The uh, Adults in the Room, is well worth reading, um, or interviews with him about it, describing how um, the Greek oxyvo, oxy means no in Greece, and they rejected the so-called Troika settlement, um, which Alexander Tapiris actually eventually took on board. So, remain and reform the EU has form on such a notion, and at this particular point in time, um, it has to be said that with the um, Commission-elect, the people that they've got there resemble nothing short of a cacistocracy, which is something which has been a point that has been made, um, and they are head, they are running headlong for a top-down technocratic dictatorship, um, in my opinion, um, and uh, 
bringing all power to themselves. I, I mean, it's summed up beautifully by the uh, stuff that was floating around on Twitter yesterday or the day before, where apparently Jean-Claude Juncker yelled at Donald Trump, I am the EU. Um, and uh, oh, to have been a fly on the wall, oh, for it even to be true. I don't even know if it's true or not. Um, but uh, this idea that the power for control over all of our destinies should vest in one Luxembourgian uh, elderly gentleman um, seems absurd, you know, insulated from any sort of democratic process. I mean, he would claim to be there because of his peers and the, the, the chosen brightest and best and all the rest of it. No. Um, and, I mean, groupthink infects us all, in-group biases affect us all, um, but it, it affects that group of people as much as any of us. There's a wonderful BBC reporter who I really like. She's half Italian and half German. Uh, 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 German uh, uh, yeah, half, half Italian, half German, I think. Um, and uh, she made a documentary about the Five Star Movement and about Brexit just after the Brexit vote. Um, and uh, it, it, it's not available on the iPlayer anymore. I, I, I actually um, got a, sh a torrent of it and put it up on uh, BitTube. Um, I, I have a BitTube channel. Um, I have a Bit uh, a BitTube ch channel, a BitChute channel, uh, a YouTube channel, um, etc. And I've tried various of them. There's one called WeTube. Um, there's, there was one called Vidme that isn't in existence anymore. But, um, but the point is about uh, about that documentary. Um, is it was in the aftermath, the shock of, of the Brexit vote. Um, and there's an interview between the uh, narrator filmmaker and Giva Hofstad. And I mean, she's very pro EU um, and, and, and thinks it's a terrible thing that, the, that Britain could ever think of leaving. But when she interviews Giva Hofstad, you can see she she says, "Are you sure? You know, do you, are you sure you really want to say that?" Um, and there you see it. You know, there you see a very extreme view about um, what uh, what the EU should be. So this is all the empire building, the EU military unification, and all the rest of it. So remain in business as usual, Giva Hofstad. Uh, remain in reform, Varoufakis, Ash Sarka. Um, that was the Green Party's position in 2015 because they wanted an in-out referendum um, and they seem to have gone away from that now um, and uh, I'm not a big fan of Caroline Lucas. Um, it's not as a person but politically I'm not a big fan uh, and I think the Green Party have made a huge mistake in building their brand, as it were, around what I see as a one-trick pony. Um, and the heir apparent to her, um, uh, who often goes on the BBC and, 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 and um, uh, I forget her name now. But, but uh, I, Jonathan Bartley, uh, who's the other one, Sean Berry, uh, They're not even Marmite, you know. Um, they're not even Marmite. It's, they're bland. I mean, it's just there's just nothing there. There's no there there. Um, uh, to quote Gertrude Steen. So anyway, uh, that's that's re uh, reform and remain, and then leave. Boris Johnson. Well. Where do you start with Boris Johnson? What's his name? De Spaffle Boris De Johnson, whatever, Von Johnson, 
Boris de Spaffel von Johnson. Where do you start with Boris Johnson? I would like to say you could start with Boris Johnson and Dominic Cummings. Um, I've read Dominic Cummings' blog, enjoy reading his blog, um, and uh, his vision for Brexit, it seems to me, is not Boris Johnson's vision for Brexit. Um, but no one vision for Brexit defines what Brexit should be. In fact, Brexit itself should not define our view of, of our beautiful country, country, I'm a Welshman, um, but I'm Brit, I was brought up in a family attached to the UK forces, um, lived in West Germany for a number of years, I live in Sweden now, um, and uh, I love Wales, I love England, I love Scotland, I love Ireland, and I, I, Northern Ireland or Southern Ireland, I mean, I, um, we have a diverse and wonderful culture and a great humour and a great generosity as a people, which isn't always reflected in those that, 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 um, that govern us, rule us, or generally take us for granted. Um, but they, they don't define us. They may define us within their own chosen groups, as it were, in their hybridised, globalist elite, as it were. Um, but they are not us. Um, and often they are not doing our bidding. Um, this is an interesting point that Henry Kissinger makes in his doctoral thesis. Uh, what he basically says is that um, Castlereagh, who was the British foreign minister uh, at the time, I think it was at the time of the Crimean Wars, um, certainly at the time of the Peterloo uh, massacre, he, he was very popular internationally, but misunderstood at home. And Kissinger says, well, foreign policy and real politic um, never plays well at home, and Castlereagh suffered for that. And the other one he mentions is Mitternick, who was the, um, the German uh, foreign minister. Um, and this is all to do with things like the Treaty of Vienna. And um, The EU plays a lot on the European wars, things like the Hundred Years' War, the Thirty Years' War, um, the First World War, the Second World War. Uh, this idea that we've had this long, prolonged period of peace thanks to the EU is actually fanciful. Um, you know, Bosnia, Ukraine, um, Syria, Libya, uh, various uh, French actions, Algeria. Um, th th there are lots, lots of advantages, uh, of, of, of examples rather, of the warlike nature of, of the EU, or the authoritarian bullying nature, even racist um, nature. And that's summed up actually in a, a, a pamphlet stroke book, which Georgia Orwell wrote, which is called Not Counting Niggers. Um, and he's talking about a guy called Streit, and Streit wrote a paper about why the EU should exist. This was even, um, I think it was, it, it, it was before the Second World War. Um, and, and basically what Orwell was saying is that if we do this EU thing, what we're doing is we're actually saying that everybody outside of the EU actually has to go in, they don't count as much, i.e. not counting, uh, you know, f foreign colonial people, uh, hence the title of the book, which is obviously uh, in language which we wouldn't use today, but, but the title is, as I say, the title is Not Counting Niggers, that, that's the title, um, and the sentiments behind it, uh, Orwell sentiments are not racist, he's actually pointing out the racism of the very idea of the EU and any amount of open border policy and all the rest of it. Um, don't start wars in Libya, guys. Don't destabilise other governments in uh, in Syria, guys. You know, don't do it. That <laughs> I mean, that's colonialism. And um, the Hofstad is said, oh, the Africa needs the EU. Africa needs EU like the Congo needed King Leopold, you wally. Um, so these are the sorts of things which um, are bigger than Brexit, 
bigger than all of us, bigger than the EU. Um, they are the things that, taking it back to the two axioms we started off with, money and debt, rich and poor. Not left and right, okay? Not Keynesianism and uh, whatever else they you know, monetarism or whatever. No, no, neoclassicism, no, no. Money and debt, rich and poor, okay? And here's a question. <coughs> what level of want is acceptable in an advanced industrial society in 2019? There's a question. Ponder that. Money and debt. What level of control of an individual's future prospects should be open to private banks creating debt and therefore giving them the means to participate within the given wealth of society? Should that power rest in private hands? Money and debt, rich and poor. So. Wiki Ballot, this has been a, a long journey, it's a longish video. Um, I made it because we're having a power cut here at the moment in, uh, in Sweden. The power went off some time ago. Um, it hasn't come back on yet. I've checked all the fuses, looked at all of that. And it's, uh, it's interesting, you know, what happens when the light go, go off? So don't get me started on global warming. Because um, again, uh, there are a number of false narratives, false religions and all the rest of it. And uh, I'm an environmentalist, I'm a tree hugger. I, I love nature. I live in a beautiful place in the back end of beyond in Sweden, in the middle of a big forest. And it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful here. Um, I'm a country boy. I was brought up in the Oxfordshire countryside uh, when I retired from my business career in London, I, I, I bought an estate um, and, and, and lived in the countryside and loved, loved countryside, country pursuits and all the rest of it. I love horses, um, I, you know, I'm kind to small children and animals, um, you know, we keep chickens here where I am in Sweden and all the rest of it. Um, and uh, uh, it's, The idea of CO2 and making CO2 the talisman of this false idea of man-made global warming, which has morphed into this idea of climate change, um, it denies the environmental movement. And on that point, I just a plug for, there's a site called Wrong Kind of Green and Wrong Kind of Green has wonderful writing by an number of different indigenous people. Uh, Corrie Morningstar, she's Canadian, uh, but there are lots of others. Um, and the series on the manufacturing of Greta Thunbury, who's from Sweden, from Stockholm. Um, and uh, curiously, I, I mean, I support Greta Thunbury uh, in that, she is raising a question. That's undoubtedly true. It just so happens that she's asking the wrong question and emphasising the wrong part of it. Um, and that has led to a very large exploitation and favouring of one narrative and othering of all other narratives. And that is the problem with the Green Movement under people like Caroline Lucas talking about climate beliefs, when what they mean by climate beliefs is that carbon dioxide, the life, gas of life, is the control knob for this thing called global warming. And this thing called global warming, um, it doesn't exist. It's way too simplified. Um, yet things like the tar sands, things like fracking, yeah, and Boris Johnson saying, oh, we're going to have a moratorium on fracking as a political stunt. Look at the work of Francis Leader, um, uh, who has great steam at blog, 
Um, there are interviews, you'll find them on my blog too, uh, and she talks about how extinction